What is up everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Rocket Vlogs. My name is Braden Carlson and I'm about to embark on the journey of building a high power rocket that is supposed to go very, very high. How high? I'd like to see over 50,000 feet, but you know, we'll see if that actually works out. I've teamed up with Great Western Buildings to build this all carbon fiber awesome rocket and fly on Aerotech N1000, which is a very powerful 98 millimeter rocket motor that's about four feet long. Being that it's a long burn motor, it's not going to go exceptionally fast for a four inch diameter rocket motor, but it is still supposed to eclipse Mach 2 and it's going to be supersonic for a very, very long time. We have to build this rocket very strong, but importantly, we have to make sure this rocket is going to come back safely. If you're familiar with my channel, you're probably familiar with the fact that I've had some issues with that department with high performance rockets. Now this is a rocket that I built using only JB Weld to put it together and if you're wondering why the paint job looks funky and trashy it's because it didn't used to look like this but it went over Mach 2 and all the paint burned up. Here's actually a very cool like little wind tunnel effect with the red paint there. The nose cone used to be red and all the paint melted ran down the rocket. It was pretty cool. This rocket served as a bit of a test bed one to sort of test my building skills because this rocket reached about the same max velocity that this end motor rocket will be reaching. And as you can see, all four fins are attached. But more importantly, you can see that because I'm holding the rocket in my hands because I got it back in the appropriate number of pieces. Now this rocket has the coupler glued in and all of the recovery gear goes in the nose cone. This four inch rocket that I'm building is going to be pretty much the same setup as this, a little bit different fins, an inch bigger in diameter, and a little bit longer to support that ferocious long end motor. However, it's going to differ a bit from that rocket because it's going to use a set of cable cutters. Cable cutters are these small devices used by an electric match to cut a zip tie and unfurl your main parachute. It'll be using dual deploy setup, which basically means that there's two stages of recovery, one small parachute, one bigger one, so that it doesn't drift off into the abyss and land miles and miles away. I'll get more into that later, but what I'm telling you is this video right here, we are developing and testing the recovery stuff. To do that, we're turning to my new rack of rocket nonsense here. If you're familiar with the channel, you've seen this garage a lot, you may not be familiar with the rack of rocket nonsense. It's because it's new. It's because I went to an estate sale and bought so much rocket stuff that it necessitated buying an entire new shelving unit just to house it all. I don't have a problem, you do. Specifically what we're going to be using is these four inch Fenala tubes from our friends at Public Missiles. And if you're from the rocketry world, I know what you're thinking. Wow, Fenala tubes, that's a really bad call for a modern performance rocket. What is it, 2001? That's about the worst decision you could make for an ultra performance minimum diameter rocket. And if you're not from the rocketry world, I'm here to tell you that Fenala tubes are a very bad decision for a high performance modern rocket. But that's not what the rocket's going to be made out of. That is what a different rocket is going to be made out of. And it's all because of the closest rocket launch club to me, Rocketry Organization of California. They fly in the Lucerne Dry Lake Bed, which is very, very close to my home, but their waiver is limited to only 7,000 feet. And that sort of benefits us in that when we're testing the recovery gear, I'll get to be able to see everything as it's happening fairly up close and personal and make sure everything is working the way we want. So what I'm going to do is take down a couple of these four inch tubes. We're going to fiberglass them and then I'm going to build a tube fin rocket because that's about as draggy as you can get. We'll get more into the design of the rocket a little bit later, but long story short, a tube fin rocket is going to allow me to still fly high thrust, high impulse motors that I just happen to have quite a few of, without breaking Lucerne's 7,000 foot waiver and giving me an opportunity to really test the electronic system, an actual in-flight test, and make sure that everything goes exactly how I want before we're gambling the house with an all carbon fiber rocket with a thousand dollar motor case in it. With all that out of the way, I say it's time we get busy. Let's take down a couple of these phenolic tubes and I'm going to get to fiberglassing. The fiberglassing process here is the same as every other time I do it. The first thing I did was prep the tube surface for bonding by sanding both of them with 120 grit sandpaper. Then I jerry-rigged myself a cute little tube holder from a piece of PVC pipe and a pair of sawhorses. 
I slid the tubes on, then slid a 10 and a half ounce fiberglass sleeve over both tubes at once and secured the center of the sleeve with a bit of duct tape, then pulled it tight around both the tubes and kept it tight with some zip ties. After that, I got to work wetting out the fiberglass cloth with laminating epoxy. If you're familiar with my channel, you've likely seen me cover my composite work with either mylar, peel ply, or a layer of extremely lightweight fiberglass cloth for an easier sanding and finishing surface. You may be wondering why I didn't do that in this case, and the answer is very simple. I was hot and I didn't want to. It was so hot in the garage, in fact, that I kept the epoxy in a tub of ice to keep it from suddenly flash curing on me. This epoxy typically needs to cure for 10 to 14 hours before it's done, but the heat helped it cure in about four. That worked out nicely for me, so I carried on trimming all the edges up and removing both the tubes from my makeshift fiberglassing rig. And with that, I think you all know what time it is. Welcome once again to another riveting installment from The Sanding Channel. I sanded the tubes down meticulously with a palm sander and 120 grit sandpaper discs until the surface of both tubes was smooth and proceeded to mark one of them to be cut into our fins. Tube fins are very simple. You can get creative with them, but I'm not going to here. Instead, I simply marked the tube every four inches to match the diameter and proceeded to cut the tube up with an angle grinder and a diamond cutoff wheel. Once I cleaned them all up with a belt sander, I was ready to glue them in place. It was at this point though, I realized that I made a mistake. So it turns out this was a coupler tube. So they don't quite reach all the way around. In most cases, a tube fin rocket is great because using six fins nets you a perfect circle of tube fins all touching each other around the circumference of your main airframe tube. Since my coupler tube is smaller in diameter than my airframe tube though, I used this handy pipe wrap measurement tool that Great Western Building sent me to mark the tube at 0 and 180 degrees. The plan became to center one tube fin on each side and glue three of them to the airframe and to each other on either side of the tube. So that's what I did. I made sure the bonding surfaces were clean and proceeded to glue all of the fins on with a simple 5 minute hobby epoxy and a handful of clamps. And if you ever see this rocket in person, please don't ever look at the gaps between the two sets of tube fins. They're not the same on both sides. I tried. I know. I'm sorry. Once all the fins were cured, I simply sanded the fiberglass coupler on the belt sander until I got an appropriate fit in the phenolic tube and Bob's your uncle. That's really all it takes to build a tube fin rocket. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is pretty much it. That's all it takes to build a tube fin rocket. This thing is so unbelievably light. I did initially plan on just leaving it minimum diameter, but the whole not being able to glue all of the fins to each other thing has made me a little hesitant in that so we're only giving it a 75 millimeter mount this thing should only go about 3500 feet on a four grain k motor which is what we're going to do its first flight on now that we have a vehicle to start testing our electronics with the next step in this video series is to implement the electronics. So, like I said, this coupler will be getting glued in just like my 75 millimeter minimum diameter rocket. I've ordered a new coupler for the actual N1000 rocket. And we're basically setting up a 100% clone of the exact electronics assembly that will be going in the end motor rocket so that I can fly it nice and low, watch everything, make sure the cable cutters work. So if you're curious about cable cutters and single section dual deployment or single opening dual deployment and all of that stuff, uh, press the subscribe button and please don't forget to give a like on this video. That is what we are getting into next. If you want to see all this fun stuff early, you can check out patreon.com slash rocket vlogs or click the join button below. And don't forget at rocketvlogs.square.site. The link will be in the description in the pinned comment. Every sticker you buy is one entry to win a $200 Wildman Rocketry gift card. You have until July 4th to get those stickers ordered and get a chance to win that Wildman gift card. 
I'm struggling out here. It is probably 120 degrees in this garage. So I'm going to pack it up. Shane and I are about to go watch a SpaceX launch. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a good time. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Braden Carlson. That's not Brandon, but you can just call me Rocket from Rocket Vlogs. And I will see you next time. It's a joke, by the way. I don't actually want anybody to call me Rocket. <laughs>